Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on understanding pandemic from the perspective of transdisciplinary teams. My name is Wong Takahiro, and I'm from Fairview International School, Ipo Campus. I will be your moderator, and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. And also assisting me off screen is our teacher, Miss Sarah. Allow me to start by thanking all of you, my fellow students, dear teachers, and honorable panelists for taking time in joining us in today's webinar. We will be focusing on a specific transdisciplinary teams, which is how we express ourselves, Levin, we will be inquiring into the ways in which we discover and express our ideas, feelings, beliefs, and values. Our central idea is mechanical devices are the modern language of communication. Do you think we are going to be discussing the pandemic today? Well, yes, our topic a design in a way that is related to the COVID-19 situation that is happening all around the world. To further enlighten us with today's issue as they share their perspective and expertise on this topic. Let me introduce our honorable panelists, Dr. Dan Sofen, a lecturer from Wawasan Urban University. We also have Ms. Alison Thor, the co-founder of Lemelin Autism Vocational Training Center. The average developing COVID-19 crisis became the top global headlines right now and it's revising We know it. Many schools worldwide have closed. Students around the world are rapidly adjusting to learning and socializing. Our main focus for the webinar today would be about how the world is coping with the change of daily life in regard to modern technologies during the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Dr. Dan Sofen with her topic on distance learning. How to share ideas and communicate effectively. Dr. Dan, can you share with us on how the current pandemic has affected the education industry? Dr. Tan, your mic is not on. Dr. Tan, sorry. Can you try? Is it okay now? Yeah, it's working. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me start again. Okay. Thank you, Hiro. Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Tan here. I'm a lecturer from Wawasan Open University. Before I start my presenting, I sorry, before I start my sharing, I would like to uh, thank Fairview International School for inviting me to share my experience and knowledge in this webinar. Okay. Regarding Hiro's question, how COVID-19 has affect uh, education industry. Okay, as you all know, COVID-19 is very infectious. Okay, it can spread from human to human through droplets. That's why we are advised to 
uh, practice social distancing. And that is why all the schools, colleges and universities are closed. With that, we are not able to go back to our school to meet our teachers and also our friends. So in order to make sure that uh, the teaching and learning are still going on, all the face-to-face -face classes are moved online. That is why uh, we all are having uh, online and distance learning right now. Okay. Other than the teaching part, uh, examination is also affected. Some of the examination are changed to alternative assessment, like my university. We are supposed to have our exam next month. Okay, but then because of COVID-19, we have changed our examination to alternative assessment where we ask our students to submit uh, assignment and also uh, projects. Okay, and then um, some of the examination are actually postponed. In Malaysia, the government school, they actually have UPSR, PT3 and SBM. And then the exam for UPSR and PT3 are cancelled and it is replaced with alternative assessment. Whereas for SPM, it should be held end of this year in November, but because of COVID-19, it is postponed to next year, first quarter of next year. Okay, uh, that is how COVID-19 has affected our industry. And then now I'm going to talk about distance learning. Okay, and before I talk about distance learning, I will talk about um, traditional learning first. Traditional learning is something uh, that we are having, like you all before MCO, you all are having traditional learning, right? Where all the teachers and students go to the school at the same time, and then uh, you all can meet each other face to face. And then when you are communicating, you actually use spoken language, facial expressions, and also gesture. And the communication are mainly synchronous, where you can get response immediately. Whereas in distance learning, it is something very different. So before I talk about distance learning, I would like to uh, introduce a you about my university first. Okay. My university is Wawasan Open University. It is a private university located in Penang. And why I want to introduce to you about my university because it is because we have been offering distance learning since we have started in 2006. So distance learning is not something that exists because of MCO, because of COVID-19. We have been practicing this in my university since we have started in 2006. Okay, why we have distance learning in our university? The students in our university are working adults. So those adults are very, very busy with their work and their family. So it is impo impossible for them to come to the class every day to attend the classes. So we uh, teach them and using distance learning. I will talk more detail about it later. And then in our university, we have four schools and we have five regional centers. The regional centers we have in Penang, uh, Ipoh, KL, uh, JB and Kuching. And since we are having it this, through distance learning, so our students are everywhere in Malaysia and some of them are even working overseas, okay? So when we are having uh, teaching and learning in school, I mean for traditional learning, we go to the class and then the teacher teach, right? But then for distance learning, we need to have a platform to have everything there, okay? So we have learning management system. Next slide. Mm. So this is the learning management system of my university. The platform that we are using is Moodle, okay? So in the LMS or learning management system, we have the learning material and the assignment. And if we have any important announcement, we will post the announcement in the LMS. And we also have a forum where the students and the teacher, uh, sorry, the 
students and the lecturers, because in my university should be lecturers, can communicate and have discussion. Uh, next slide, please. Next. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about learning material. After this slide will be learning material. Okay, in my, in my university, because we are offering tertiary education, so we provide the students PDF file. Before we, uh, when we first started, we actually have the books, you know, hard copy. And then we post the books to our students and we expect the students to read. And now with the advancement of technology, we no longer post the books to our students. We turn everything to soft copy, like PDF files, and the, our students uh, study from the PDF files, okay? So other than the PDF files, we also provide them PowerPoint slides and WFlex. Okay, WFlex is uh, a summary of the course material. As shown in the next slide, yeah. In WFlex, we use uh, videos, pictures, to help our students to understand the course material, the learning material. And from here, we explain and then we guide them to go back to the course material. Students. In the sense that the tutorial classes is not compulsory for them. So if they do not attend the tutorial, they are studying by their own. So this is something that we help them to study by, the, by themselves. And then, like Fairview, as I understand from uh, Mr. Alvin and also Dr. Suki, you all are having class every day, right? And then for my university, we provide tutorial once in a month only. Some of the tutorial are face-to-face -face where we have it in our regional center, whereas some of the tutorials are conducted through video conference, like what you are having now through Zoom. Okay, in my university, we use several tools, several platforms like uh, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Skype. Okay, just now I was talking about how the lecturer uh, share our knowledge with the students okay now i'm going to talk about how the students actually uh, submit their assignment so for submitting assignment like now when you are in your school if your teachers ask you to write an essay so you are going you will write the essay in the exercise book and then submit the exercise book to your teachers right but then for distance learning our students actually um, write the essay in Microsoft Word and then the set, they send the soft copy to us. And then another type of assignment is presentation. Like in the next slide, because sometimes in the school, your teachers would uh, your teachers ask you to come up and present in front of the teachers and the students, right? And your friends, right? Whereas in distance learning, we do not meet our students. So how are we going to see how they present? So we ask them to video record their own presentation and send the video to us. So we mark, we give the marks based on the videos. And then another type of assignment could be project. So like in your school, maybe when your teachers ask you to do some project, you just do the project and then submit, okay? Your teachers will be there next to you to see how you are operating the project and also how you prepare the project and they see the product, right? Whereas for distance learning, as we can see in the next slide, we ask our students to record the project using videos or pictures. For example, last, last semester, I asked my students to uh, plan and conduct lesson because some of my students are actually preschool teachers. 
So I asked them to plan a lesson and teach their student, preschool student, about uh, 2D shapes. So when they are conducting the lesson, they actually ask their friend to video record their uh, lesson. And then when they submit their report, they attach the videos and pictures. And I give the marks based on the videos and pictures. Okay, that is uh, about my university. That is uh, how distance learning happened in my university. Whereas in Fairview, as I got to know from Mr. Edwin and also Dr. Suki, you all are having class every day, right? Where you have a Zoom session with your teacher every day the, during the green slot, right? And then you all also have the learning management system. For my university, the platform we are using is Moodle. And then for your school, Fairview International School, the platform that you are using is Class Do Dojo and also Google Classroom. So in the Google Classroom, your teachers share the assignment and the material for you to read. And also whenever they have announcement, they make the announcement in the Google Classroom. So now Google Classroom is become the main learning pl platform that you need to uh, visit every day. Okay, in sum, uh, next slide please. So what I can conclude is, for distance learning, how we express ourselves is a little bit different if compared with traditional learning. As I have said just now, during the, uh, in the traditional learning, we express our idea or our feeling using spoken language, uh, fac facial expression and also gesture. Whereas in distance learning, we share our ideas using text, pictures, audio and videos. And how are we going to deliver it? We use the technology tools to deliver the text, the pictures and videos to our friends or our teachers. So the tools can be uh, Class Dojo, Google Classroom, Teams, WhatsApp, Telegram, and many, many more. Okay, in conclusion, I can say that for distance learning, although we all are far apart from each other, but then technology has made us connected. Insightful sharing on how Wawasan Open University conducts their distance learning program. Fairview School also have moved to the distance learning platform due to the current pandemic. Now, we have some poll questions to our audience. Do you agree that virtual classroom are changing how we study? Is it, is it distance learning difficult? Chinese, Chinese, yes. And then is it difficult? No. Interesting response from the audience. As we can see that the majority of them agree that distance learning is difficult. It also show that virtual classroom are getting popular. Generally, it's cheaper 
higher scalable because it can reduce basic training costs. In my perspective, the sudden move to distant learning does come with some challenges for all involved. There is no faculty around for face-to-face -face interaction and the opportunity to lose track of the deadlines are high. Do you mind sharing more on that perspective, Dr. Dan, how we face these challenges? Okay, thank you, Hiro. Okay, I'm going to share uh, about the challenges faced by both the learners and the educators. Okay, I, I'm sure some of you have been facing this problem where you study by your own and then you find that, oh my God, I don't understand. Oh my God, this is the question asked by the teachers, but I don't know how to answer. And I don't know where to get help, right? Or some of you may feel lonely or feel bored staying at home for so long, two months already. So if you, if you are experiencing this one, don't worry because uh, these are something quite common among the distance learner. Okay, but then you need to know how to help yourself. So how can you help yourself to go through this uh, distance learning? First, you must be proactive. Okay, be proactive. Read the material before you go to the class so that uh, when you attend the class, the online classes conducted by your teachers, you know, you roughly know what your teachers are talking about. It will help you to learn better during the class. And then another thing is you can ask your teachers if you don't understand. But then take note that you, you shouldn't ask your teachers when the teachers is teaching. Okay, because um, it is quite disturbing if you ask them when they are teaching. So I'm sure when your teachers are teaching, they will pause from time to time to ask you whether you understand or not. So you can ask them during that time. Or if you don't have chance to ask them during the class, you can ask them after the class. As I know, uh, in your school, you have the uh, yellow slot and blue slot, the tutorial and the offline session, am I right? So that is the session that you can get help from your teachers. So don't be shy if you have problem, just go to them, they will be there to help you. Okay, and then another thing is you can uh, ask your friends if you feel more comfortable uh, talking to your friends. Huh? And also, uh, if you have uh, online forum, for my university, we have online forum in our LMS. So the online forum is a place where we have discussion. So we always encourage our students to participate in our online forum. And when you want to communicate with your friends, you can use whatever platform that you are familiar with or you feel comfortable with. It could be email, WhatsApp, FaceTime, or WeChat. Okay. And then, uh, in order to express yourself better in distance learning, you can use emoji. But I'm not going to talk more about emoji because I know that you all are very expert and familiar in using emoji or g file when you are communicating online but one thing i want you to take note is about netiquette okay because um when we are interacting online it is very important that we practice netiquette the netiquette is a term with uh is a term it comes from internet etiquette Okay, because I find that many people, they thought that when they are commenting or when they are uh, writing online, they are hiding behind the keyboard. So nobody see them and they can uh, say whatever they want. If they don't like somebody, they just give negative comments. This is not a right way of doing things. Okay, I hope that you will take note about it. So when you are commenting online, make sure that you think first. Okay, think whether the comments you or the story that you are sharing is true, is helpful, inspiring, necessary, or kind. Okay, make sure that it is kind. If it is something offensive, then do not send. 
because even though you do not meet the person face to face, what you comment, if it is offensive, it does hurt your friend. Okay? And then, uh, how about the teachers? As you all feel that, uh, some of you might be feeling that, uh, oh my God, I, I, I face so many challenges in distance learning. So actually, do you know that your teachers are also facing a lot of challenges because of this distance learning. Because uh, this MCO and COVID-19 is something unprecedented. Nobody experienced this before. So some of the teachers, they are not prepared. They don't have the skills or experience to use the uh, online system or the online application. And now, because of the MCO, they pick up the skill. They need to learn how to conduct the lesson using Zoom. They need to learn how to post the assignment on the uh, Google Classroom. So it is a challenge for them also, especially when we first started the MCO because they have to learn a lot of things. And then another thing, uh, another challenge that they face is the readiness of infrastructure because some of them don't have the device like webcam at home and some of them, they don't have a very good internet connectivity at home. And also uh, with the distance learning, they actually have higher workload because some of the students, they don't have um, internet access. So the teachers actually put a lot of effort to create the learning material to help this group of students, okay? So, uh, that's all. And then, before I end my session, I have one question that um, you may think about. It. So how can I express my gratitude to my friends and teachers during MCO period? You may think about it and give uh, your answer in the chat box. That was amazing and indeed a very meaningful and informational talk, Dr. Dunn. I think what I can perceive here is that there are different platforms that we can use for learning during this pandemic. For example, the use of specific innovation and open educational application with students. Using this concept, we can make students temporarily adjust to learning and socializing in the current situation right now. Ms. Allison will be sharing her perspective about how different people from different backgrounds can share their thoughts and feelings during this time of crisis. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, Fairview International School for inviting me as a panelist of today. Okay, so before we start, let me introduce myself. I'm Alison Thor, the co-founder of Let Me Learn. Um, at the same time, actually, I also graduated from uh, psychology from UK and I'm a member of British Psychological Society. I have eight years of experience in special needs education. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So here I would like to briefly um, let you know that the structure of the content of today. So we started off to introduce you uh, about me and my center, definitely. And then we will talk about how thoughts and feelings intertwine. And then the next one is how to express your thoughts and feelings. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, I came from the background of psychology. So therefore, I have been fascinated by human mind and behavior. So that leads me to this word, autism. So there was a saying, when you meet a student with autism, you are meeting one student with autism. So it means that every student with autism you meet is special and unique. So I'm always very interested to explore this uniqueness. So then it goes to the next word, inclusion. 
So because of this, community is often seen as disabled. Um, they might be bullied in school, they might be uh, neglected uh, by the family. So we often wish they can be actually included in the society. And here comes the next one, acceptance. So instead of being just aware of this community, I believe it's time for all of us to look into acceptance so that they can be seen, they can be heard, and they can be understood. So here I would like to introduce you. This is my, the community conscious business partner that work with us. So we partner with all these company, then they act as a training ground, training platform for my students to get their hands on vocational skill. And so on, go to the next one. Here you can see that uh, we've, we actually have a factory, uh, we have American restaurant, uh, we have a pharmacy as the training ground. Okay, so not just work skill, we also emphasize a lot on social communication skill and emotion regulation skill. So we believe soft skill are the ones that would actually bring them far in the journey of independent living. So on. Yeah, so we actually also do conducted a lot of autism acceptance event, uh, like we actually collaborate with Sunway Putra Mall. Sunway Putra Mall is our first autism friendly shopping mall. We also collaborate with Grab and Intel as well. Miss Allison, understanding that you are involved in special needs education, do you think the way special needs individuals express themselves and how we express ourselves are similar or different in some way? Yeah, that was a good question. So yeah, there is a slight difference in how we express ourselves and how they express themselves. So students with autism, mainly they struggle with uh, social interactions and communication as well. But I would say as a neurotypical, we all also do struggle with this as well, right? Uh, so somehow I believe that we all are the same. So this, the next slide, you all know this. Yeah, this is Avengers. So myself, I always believe that my students and I are like a team of Avengers. Yes, I can see that um, our students actually say Avengers. Yes, we are all somehow the same. Yeah, but uh, we all look different. We all have our strengths and weaknesses, but we are like a family. So we all have the same goal and vision, which is hope more, more, more people would understand us and accept us in the society. Okay. Yes, I can see some of you say that, yeah, we are like a family. That's true, okay? So before I share with you how to express yourself, I always believe that it is important for us to understand why must we learn how to express ourselves. So in order to talk about expressions, we definitely would need to understand our thoughts and feelings. So let's go into learning more about thoughts and feelings. So do you know, hey, thoughts and feelings are actually intertwined? So you can't really separate your thoughts and feeling. So you might be able to control your facial expression, but uh, as human, we can't stop ourselves from feeling the emotion. Okay, so let's look into this scenario here. So you say hi to your best friend online. So you notice your best friend has seen the message. Hmm, but after three hours, he or she is still not responding, yeah? So let's think about what's in your mind when you have this scenario, okay? All right, so what's your thought? Okay, I can see someone say worried, someone say uh, it's normal for me, hey? All right. Okay, a little bit upset. Okay, let's go to the next one. 
All right. So if in your mind you're thinking, ah, uh, oh my gosh, what's wrong with him or her? So most probably like what you say, you'll be feeling upset. So look at it. You'll be feeling like a hawk. All right. So like some of you say the next one. Oh no, if you're thinking, oh no, did I do something wrong? I think you most probably will be feeling worried and perhaps also feeling insecure about your friendship. So you keep feeling afraid of making a mistake that will offend your friend. So I, I noticed that some of you did mention that you might be feeling worried as well, yeah? So then the next one. So if in your mind you're thinking, hmm, maybe he or she is busy, yeah? So then I would say most probably you won't feel worried, you won't feel upset, and you'll be feeling much calmer. So I could see that some of the students actually mentioned that uh, um, I won't feel anything. <laughs> right. This is interesting, Miss Allison. I can't agree mm -hmm. that these feelings of being confused and uncertainty occurs in our life regularly. I never saw that thoughts linked to the feeling as obvious as you has you have shown moving forward how do you suggest we regulate our emotion is there a matter for it okay thank you hero yes i would say that's a method of it that's why i'm here today so you can see a word big word here growth mindset so i want to introduce this word growth mindset here Okay, so growth mindset is actually introduced by Carol Dweck. She is an American psychology. She published a book called Mindset and she also spoke about it in TED Talk as well. So she challenges the common belief that intelligent people are born smart. So instead, she encouraged us to believe that our mind is teachable, it can be changed, we can be improved. All right, so adopting the growth growth mindset, we can be less stressful as we believe that mistake is part of life. So we can learn from our mistake and we can improve on it. Okay, so the first one here you can see fixed mindset. If you're thinking this is too hard, it is under fixed mindset. So if you go into this may take some time, it's actually growth mindset. So if you're thinking this way, like when you're doing homework, you keep thinking that, hey, this is so hard, you most probably will give up, right? Okay, so then you go to the next one. I make a mistake and you keep thinking in your mind that would be under fixed mindset. So, but on the other hand, if you, let's say, you're able to adopt this thought, mistakes help me learn, you are actually are able to grow yourself. Do you see that? And then the third one, if you keep thinking that, ah, I will never be that smart. So I would say that would be under the category of having a fixed mindset. So on the other hand, you try to rewire your thoughts and see that, hey, I will try to learn how to do this. You are actually adopting a growth mindset. Yeah? So here I would like to go into this scenario. Yeah? So this scenario that happened to one of my students. Okay, he mentioned this. Lah. My mom came into my room, intruding my private space, uh, cleaned up my desk, so I slammed the door at her. Pop! All right, so in his mind, let's look into it. So if it's a fixed mindset, if he keep thinking that, hey, this is too hard, she will never understand that I need space. Like, I don't really want to communicate with her, it's so hard. So most probably, um, it will reflect in your action. So he is not going to talk to her from now on. So on the other hand, if you're able to rewire your thought, you are adopting a growth mindset, you'll be thinking, hey, this will take some time for her too. 
um, I'm aware that she is stressed out too. So I imagine we are all actually in this lockdown. We basically have to face each other every every day. La. So I'm pretty sure mother feels stressed out too. So that would reflect in your actions. So basically, you feel much calmer and you will be able to find out why she came into my room. You got that? Okay, so I would want to highlight here that we should not only embrace the positive emotions. I'm not asking you to be happy all the time, which I don't think is possible. Okay, and trying to suppress your negative feelings. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. Here's why. So let's go to the next slide. So Harvard School of Public Health and University of Rochester actually reported that people who suppress their emotion increase chance of early death from all causes by more than 30%. So with their risk of being diagnosed with cancer increasing by 70% as well. Yeah. So however, uh, I would also want to highlight this. This does not give you the privilege to lash at others. Like I said just now, especially during this pandemic and lockdown, we are seeing our family member like 24-7. If we not just tough for ourselves, I believe that it's tough for our family member as well. So it is important to learn how to regulate our emotions. So here's, I'm going to guide you how to express yourself, okay? Dear audience, I think this is a key point on how we manage our feelings and thoughts process. Now, I would like to ask a question to our audience. Do you think you are able to really express yourself around friends and family? Do you occasionally feel afraid of being judged when you express yourself? It is interesting to see the responses from our audience. Miss Allison, what are your thoughts about the result? 
Wow, I can see that you all are really, really so expressive in this way, that you all are really actively participate in this poll. So I can see that the first question is that most of you all think that you're able to express yourself around friends and family. That's good, really good job. So, and the next one, do you occasionally feel afraid of being judged when you express yourself? I think, yes, I think myself as well, I think a lot. So that's why today I'm here to help you and guide you how to express yourself. Okay, so let's go into the, the next slide. So the first step... Having, having a growth mindset is not only healthy for us, but for people around us as well. Miss Allison, how do you suggest we apply this in real life? Okay, so yes, having a growth mindset, it, it is important. And here's how we can look into how to apply it into the real life. So the first step I would want to say is that it's first to understand your thought. So to look into the cause and then go into, do you think that you are thinking with a growth mindset or not? And then go to the third one, how can I rewire my thoughts? And the fourth one, what can I do to not hurt others and myself? So for the scenario that, that I explained just now, whereby mother invade the space, uh, it is actually a true story for my students. Um, that was previous, previous slide, okay? So he realized that the reason for number one, he realized the reason why mother came into the room is actually he left biscuit wrapper and plates on his study desk. So when he can look into the cause, he realized his mistake, then he knows how to move on from there. So number two, if he's able to think about with a growth mindset, he will most probably will be able to rewire his thought. But if he if he use a fixed mindset, he, he thinks that, ah, fine, it's so hard to talk to my mom, she won't be able to understand pretty much we will not looking into alternative way to work out the conflict calmly. So here's why that it is important to look into a growth mindset, then he will be able to rewire his thought and be able to empathize with his mother. So for the third one, he can understand that his mother feeling stressed too during this time. Then go to the, no the fourth one, he'll be learning that in order not to let mother uh, invading his space, he can try to first communicate with her and definitely show more responsibility in making sure his desk is not dirty. So the next, the next example that I want to tell you, want to share with you is also a real story from my student, this student's why. Okay, so um, my students came into the class feeling very angry at himself and he said this, she will never forgive me. So what was happening was that he dozed off in the class and didn't submit homework for weeks. So I actually helped him to sit down with me and we look into the first number one, what is the cause? So when he's more aware of the cause, he realized, yes, I do have the responsibility of uh, making my teachers feeling upset. So because I doze off and no homework submissions for Rick. So for the number two, did I think with a growth mindset, I would say that is a no. Okay. So for number three, how can I rewire my thoughts? So he can think about he can think about, yeah, I did wrong, but I can find a way to improve. But if he still fixated in having that fixed mindset, no, I don't think that I can improve, then he will be not able to find ways to um, resolve this conflict. So having a growth mindset whereby he can say that I can find a way to improve does help the whole scenario. 
Yeah, I can see someone say that he can try to be positive. So the fourth one, what can I do to not hurt others and myself? So when I sit, when I sit with him and dissect this whole scenario, it does help him to see from an observer eye. So then he actually said that I can apologize and let her know my situations. So the issue is that he actually doesn't know how to do the homework and he the homework does kind of pile up for so so many weeks. So he doesn't know where to start. So when he can adopt a growth mindset, he can actually hold responsibility of his mistake and learn from the mistake. All right. So let's go to the second one. Well, I really like this. He can work on rewrite, rewire his thought. That's true. That's what I'm teaching today. So second step is to expand your emotional vocabulary. So a lot of time here in Malaysia, uh, when our parents ask us, how's your day? You will say, okay. So when you have not so good day, you will say, okay, good day, also okay, right? So we actually use a lot of okay so much in our daily life instead of give a name to our emotion. Okay, but words matter. So if you experience a strong emotion, I would suggest you, encourage you to take a moment to consider what does that call it? How to, how to name your emotion, yeah? Yes, we should learn to how to use a proper emotion. It definitely helps us to understand ourselves, understand further how we feel, and definitely learn how to comment, communicate this feeling to the people around us. So imagine if you're saying okay all the time, uh, I'm pretty sure your parents or your family members or your friends would not know how to comfort you at the right time because they might not know what, what do you mean by okay. Okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next one, the third one. The third, oh, okay. The, sorry. So the second step, this is how you can do it. You can try to do it. So first of all, you can set a timer for 20 minutes. So you can using either a notebook or computer, write down, pen down your emotional experience from the past week, past month or years. A something, a, a strong emotion that you've deeply felt connected to. It could be just today, it could be just yesterday, all right? So don't worry about making it perfect or readable. Go where your mind takes you. You can try this out, yeah? So at the end, it's okay. You don't have to save the document, all right? The point is that you want to transfer your thoughts and feeling out of you and on the page. So there are some saying that actually you can actually, if you write on the book, you can actually tear the paper and throw it away. So it is a form of expression as well, yeah. All right. So this is one of the students sharing. He actually penned down this for us to read. So he said, uh, I felt bored and being locked up in a cage of salt. I couldn't go out to work and hang around places for a long time. So um, that time when he's saying actually the MCO is almost ending. So he said, at least I can hope the outbreak will end soon and you will learn to control it. And perhaps one day there'll be a possible vaccine against the virus. So this is the words that he penned down for us to, to take a look at it. Yeah? So then the third step is to understand your expression style. Yeah, you will need to understand your personality, whether you're introvert or you're extrovert. You also need to know that what's your interest, what do you like, and types of expression as well. So I would say many of my students struggle with uh, communications. So using speech to express themselves would be something that very challenging for them. So I often encourage them to find other ways to express themselves. So here's, here's the slide that I want to show you a few uh, expressions that my students are doing during this uh, pandemic lockdown. Yeah. 
So you can see um, this student is actually using art to express himself. So do you know that actually during this lockdown, he actually already managed to finish two complete set of painting. So art does calm them down. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah, this is actually one of my students who recently got featured in Star newspaper. So for him, he is someone pretty rigid in the routine and schedule. So for suddenly, he doesn't get the chance to go out at all, go to school. He actually find it very hard to regulate his emotion. So as you can see in this uh, newspaper article, he actually used art as a and expression as well to help him to adapt. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting part. I felt that most of you would definitely know what is TikTok, what is vlog. Uh, some of my students are uh, high functioning autism. They are capable of doing, uh, making video, they are making vlogging as well. So I do encourage them to use this way to express themselves too. So some of us actually do baking as well. So my students and I, um, before this lockdown, we actually always have a cooking class with them, a physical real cooking class with them. But because of this lockdown, we actually have to use Zoom to conduct our lessons. So one of the lessons is actually using Zoom to do baking with our students. Here you can see um, baking is an expression too. So you can see from this picture, there are a variety of ways to present your cookie. All right, yeah. Thank you, I can see that one of you say that, yeah, my brother does art and baking as well. That's true. So here you can see um, our students also learning how to work out using Zoom as well. So as I actually presenting this to you, actually my students right now, they are actually working out. Yeah, so you can actually learn how to translate your energy into something purposeful like this, like baking, doing things that you like or work out. Yeah, all right. So here I would want to highlight this. I do want you to take away this. It is really important, okay? Um, all right, okay, so Never be ashamed of what you feel, who you are, and what you want to be. So it is important to find ways to express your feeling so you will be seen, you'll be heard, and be understood. So I also believe that the things that, the tips that I share with you today is not solely for my students. I believe that throughout this session, this journey, I myself learned a lot uh, from my students as well. So it is important for all of us to learn uh, different ways to express ourselves. And then it is important to remember that as we express ourselves, let's try not to hurt anyone, yeah? Thank you, Miss Allison. That was a very interesting session. I certainly hope all of you enjoyed that presentation as well as I did. I am particularly interested in the different ways that we can use to express our thoughts and feelings. Having a growth mindset, the belief that you are in control of your own ability and can learn and improve is the key to success overall there was a great back-to-back -back session we shall now address the question for our audience please feel free to try in or ask live question the first question is from vanya from Binan campus and the question goes like this. How does distance learning affect the physical and mental health of the student? Let's ask Dr. Dan's help to answer this question. 
Okay, thank you, Hero. Okay, for distance learning, because uh, we are not uh, we are far from each other and we do not go to school, so we don't have the exercise, the physical uh, ed exercise that we are having in the school. So, so most of the time, the children they just sit at home and then look at the like, computer and play games or study. So they do not exercise. So this might affect their uh, physical health. Okay. And then also for some of them, they spend a lot of time sitting in front of the computer, attend the online classes or do their homework. So they may uh, experience uh, eye strains or neck strains or backache problem. Okay. So these are some uh, physical health problems that might uh, face by the students. So... Another thing is the mental health because many students, they might feel isolation, okay? Because they cannot meet their friends and also their teachers. So it might lead to uh, anxiety and also depression. So for this, I would encourage teach, uh, students to get connected with their teachers and also their friends, talk to their Talk to them if you feel like you are lonely or you feel bored. Okay, and then for physical health, I think uh, you can go to YouTube. There are a lot of exercise that you can go together with them. Okay. Uh, that's it, Hero. Thanks, Dr. Dan. The second question is asked by Kimberly from Benin campus as well. How could special needs children get emotional support during distance learning? I think you will be the right person to answer this. Miss Allison, what do you think? I think this is a really good, um, good question. So um, for my case, my students uh, would be able to get emotional support anytime through WhatsApp and we have registered and licensed counsellor in our team to help them. So at the same time, we actually, we also have two chat group. So where one is more formal for formal teaching and we send out homework and so on. But we do have the other chat group that is more fun and relaxed where our students can talk about anime, we can talk about cartoon and movies. So we actually help that help in this way. Thanks, Miss Allison. Now we will move on to the third question from Jabi Campers. Ng Yao Zhu. Is there another way of monitoring students who do not pass or hand in their homework or tasks? Well, this question fits and well to Dr. Dan's experience. What do you think, Dr. Dan? Okay, thank you, Hero. Okay, about this, I think sometimes the teachers might be thinking that the students do not submit their homework. Actually, sometimes uh, the students, they just uh, overlook that uh, about the homework that they need to submit. So the teachers can always uh, encourage the students to go back to their Google Classroom because in Google Classroom, there is one section to do. It's a list of tasks that they need to do. The teachers can always encourage them to go to check the to-do list from uh, frequently so that they won't miss any homework that they need to submit. And then to monitor the students uh, about who has passed up and who hasn't, uh, in the teacher's uh, dashboard, there is actually one section that they, the teacher can just click and then can easily assess the student's homework. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Let's proceed to the next question from Karoi in Binan campus. Here goes the question. What are the different forms of technology used to help children with special needs? 
are the parents challenge to get them? I'm sure Miss Allison has the answer to this question. Okay, thank you, Hero. So I would say that my case, my student, majority of my students are verbal. So they are not non-verbal, means that they can actually somehow still communicate with, with us. So we use WhatsApp and Zoom at the same time to communicate with the students. And not just that, we actually work very closely with the parent. So um, a little bit similar with uh, what Dr. Tan just now mentioned and um, in what has implemented in February as well. We also use Google a lot. We use Google Classroom as well to deliver our homework and teaching. Um, at the same time, we incorporate a lot more uh, pictures and video to teach them about this pandemic. And I think we also use a very interesting one. It, it's called Kahoot. Is an online quiz too, so to make them aware of um, um, this pandemic and certain um, procedure that has to be done before all of us are allowed to go out. Okay, so because all of my students are verbal, they do not need uh, assistive technology like AAC. So AAC is augmentative and alternative communication. Is a app whereby uh, the non-verbal students are actually able to tap on the screen to communicate with the people around them. So um, if let's say if you want to talk about non-verbal students, I would highly recommend them to use this app to help them to know how to express themselves. So yes, some parents do find challenges in using uh, the technology like the like Google or Zoom and WhatsApp as well. So we have to really work closely with the parents. We have to call them as well to help them to set up a Zoom account and the Google account as well. So at the same time, we also learn how to uh, empathize with them and encourage them uh, when necessary. Oh yes, I can see Dr. Suki say you, you all use Kahoot too. That's good. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm just going to come in here. So uh, I think that's quite a lot of questions that we had from pre-session. Now uh, I want to look into some of the questions. So Ms. Addison, you have uh, agreed to answer one of these questions live. Is the new distance learning change beneficial for children, especially those with mental health or special needs, or is it affecting them negatively? Or if so, are there any innovation that will help them to cope uh, and change? Uh, you may want to. Okay, so uh, it's kind of similar to the answer that I gave just now, but I also want to say that it, it does actually impact them in a way as well. So I would not say it's completely negative and I would say it's not completely positive as well. So we actually have to find way we actually, the, the key is that we build relationship with our students. So with the Zoom session that we have um, roughly four times a week, we actually able to connect to them. So at the beginning of the Zoom session that we usually give them time to regulate themselves. So like for some of my students were not able to sit down for too long, I actually allow them to go around as long as um, they are able to listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, so I do give them space, I do give them break, so that they can learn how to use this new technique to, to, uh, to be still teaching and learning as well. Yeah, does that uh, answer the question? I think that'll be good feedback um, for Ceres from Penang. Uh, panelists can go through the questions and uh, just click on answer live then you know we will address that question so that you can actually uh, answer that live. Uh, we will try to address the top five questions, uh, the one that most upwards. Yeah? If you're able to type the answers then we will, uh, that will be better as well. Thank you. So um, we will have about two to five minutes so let the panelists to answer the questions that you have asked. Very good questions actually.
Is that, uh, apparently once you click answer live, you can just uh, answer the question directly. Okay, so the, the question is, how would the special needs children get the help that they need from their parents? So I would say some of, um, most of my students are actually already adults, so they would be pretty much very honest when they need help. They would just tell, tell the mother, hey, I need help. But I would say there are times that they might not know. The main struggle is that they might not know when is the right time to look out for help. So that is the part that we actually have to um, have to guide them in a way. So we sometimes do hear parents complain to us that, hey, my, uh, my child actually asked me at the wrong time when I was cooking. So that's why I can't help him at all. So that part we actually will carry to the uh, to the meeting with the students and and like I said just now, dissect the scenario with him or her. Then that person would know how to uh, reach out help at the right time. So for those students who uh, who are sl slightly more challenging in behavior, I would say that they will show. Uh, in a different form. So it could be not using speech, they could show you through the behavior. So um, like, like uh, they might be throwing tantrum is part of an expressions as well. So as uh, educators, as a caretaker of uh, people with special needs, actually we have to be very observant in how they express themselves, whether they need help or not. All right, thank you, Dr. Tan. Okay, uh, there's one question about how does distance learning benefits students' education? So I think for uh, distance learning, I think uh, now is uh, the only option that we can have right now because of COVID-19. So we need to practice uh, social distancing. So this is one of, this is the option that we can do so that uh, the students can continue to learn, okay? And then actually it is good for the students because uh, distance learning actually help the students to learn how to be independent because in distance learning, they need to know uh, where to get the information, get where to get help and how to uh, communicate with others instead of other people come to you and ask whether you need help or not. So it is good for the students in terms that it uh, helps the students to learn to be independent. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's one more that you would like to answer as well. Uh, how can someone communicate freely and express themselves freely without having hesitation? Uh, without hesitation, I think uh, when we are communicating, it is like uh, when we are communica uh, communicating face to face. When we are communicating with others, we need to um, respect others, right? No matter we communicate online or face to face. So it is still the same. We, we can say anything we want, but we still need to um, be careful of the words, uh, the terms that we are using. All right, I think, uh, thank you for, the uh, for answering these questions. And I think you can, you may continue to answer the uh, students uh, through uh, typing the answer. Um, Hiro, I'll, uh, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Dan and Miss Allison for helping the audience to clear their doubts. Dear friends, thank you too for their meaningful question. I heard our panelists have helped you to get the answer to your curious mind. We have come to the end of this webinar. Please allow me to summarize the section by leaving a key message to our reviewer. First, we learned that there are different platforms that we can use for learning during this pandemic. Even when online access is there, some challenges persist. Setting rules and being inclusive are among key considerations. Secondly, it's easy to let negative thoughts and feelings crack 
and during the COVID-19 situation, this is an emotional time and it's okay to feel upset, scared, or frustrated. There are many ways of managing our emotions so they don't overwhelm us and it's important to find a way that works best for you personally. Keeping a growth mindset and finding ways to regulate our emotion are true still in this time of uncertainty. Dear participants, this is for you to think and take back as we end this webinar. Success at communication is not about telling someone something. It's about the receivers understand of what you wanted them to understand. I hope you will be able to connect with the current situation and understand the importance of distance or online learning as well as healthy ways to express our thoughts and feelings. Social distancing measures are currently being implemented in many countries. It is true the COVID-19 outbreak has brought some change, but remember, keeping each other safe and connect is everyone's responsibility. Physical distancing is not social isolation. Once again, our warmest thanks to our panelists, Dr. Dan and Miss Allison for joining us today and to all of you who have spent your time with us this afternoon. This is Wong Takahiro signing off now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hiro. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much for panelists and all the students for being here, uh, to Hiro and also Miss Sara for being there to help everything out. Um, we do have some, uh, some few more questions. We will try to answer the questions in the next few more minutes and then uh, we will end the session. For those who have uh, participated, thank you for being here. We will have another session tomorrow on sharing the planet, um, another perspective and a very interesting perspective as well as what we have learned today. Thank you and good day. Please ask, um, Please add the, uh, what do you call this? Please fill up the feedback form for today's uh, webinar and I will, uh, we will get back to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Good day. Bye-bye.